Well, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you've been enjoying your conference. My 40 meetings are finished. It is indeed a pleasure to be here in London. I want to again thank the Association of Municipalities of Ontario and your president, Colin Bass, for the entire AMO membership, for the opportunity to join you and speak with you today, and offer my sincere thanks to all the municipal leaders and officials for your dedication to public service and for all you do to support healthy communities. Throughout the past year, I've had the opportunity to travel across Ontario visiting the front lines of our healthcare system. I've seen many examples of world-class healthcare in Timmins, in Ottawa, Sudbury, Kitchener, Windsor, and many more communities across Ontario. I've also seen that our healthcare system and healthcare workers are facing significant pressures. We know the status quo is not working, and for too many people in our community, healthcare has become too hard to access. People are waiting too long for an appointment or surgery or having to travel too far to get care, and spending too much time trying to navigate the healthcare system. Under the, prim under the leadership of Premier Ford, our government has been making record investments in healthcare and bringing bold, innovative, and creative changes to make it easier for people to conveniently connect to care they need closer to home. Our plan is called Your Health. And it is focused on creating a better connected healthcare system that makes it easier for people to navigate at every stage of their life. Our plan makes sure that you continue to use your OHIP card, never your credit card. Under Premier Ford, that will never change. We've made it possible for Ontarians to connect to care closer to home at their local pharmacy for 13 common ailments like pink eye, rashes and urinary tract infections and all you need is your OHIP card. Since we've made these changes in January, more than 300,000 assessments have been completed in thousands of participating pharmacies across Ontario. Our government is also significantly expanding the number of publicly funded procedures being done at community surgical and diagnostic centers to eliminate backlogs and reduce wait times in your community. We are strengthening all aspects of health care and have increased funding by, to our public health units by approximately 16% since 2018. As we deliver on our bold and innovative actions in our Your Health Plan, we see a clear opportunity to work with local public health partners to address long-standing challenges in the public health system. Today, I'm pleased to announce that the province is restoring funding to a 75% provincial, 25% municipal cost share ratio. We will increase the base funding by 1% annually over the next three years so that they can be more effectively able to plan and prepare. This will give us time to work together with municipalities and public health partners on a longer-term approach. And I can guarantee you that any approach will not result in more financial burden on your municipalities. We are also going to work with the sector to clarify public health roles and responsibilities, to reduce overlap and ensure public health care is aligned with provincial priorities as outlined by the Chief Medical Officer of Health. And we will be providing one-time funding and support to public health units that voluntarily decide, voluntarily decide to merge to increase their ability to provide care to more people. We're also making significant ongoing investments in Ontario's hospitals, building on the over 3,500 acute, post-acute, and critical beds opened since the start of the pandemic, investing in more surgeries and diagnostic procedures, and getting shovels in the ground for over 50 health infrastructure projects over the next 10 years. We need to increase capacity in hospitals, build new healthcare facilities, and renew existing hospitals and community health centers, 
and we, we are committed to doing that. We also recognize that emergency departments continue to face pressures that have been decades in the making. Just last month, we announced an additional $44 million investment that for the first time will include smaller and rural emergency departments across Ontario to ensure Ontarians can access emergency care when and where they need it. We will also continue to support municipalities through the Land Ambulance Services Grant Partnership with a 6% increase in funding. And thank you. we're also increasing the availability of paramedics and ambulances by investing in the dedicated offload nursing program with an additional $51 million in funding over the next three years. These are programs that have been proven to work in your community and we're making a commitment to expand them. We will also provide about 800,000 dedicated hours to support offloading ambulance patients, ensuring that paramedics get back out into your community faster. We continue to be there as an equal partner for our municipalities to ensure that they have the investments required to reduce wait times. This year and into 2024, 30 municipalities will be receiving more than $33 million in funding to further improve offload times within your communities. We will continue to find innovative ways to reduce wait times in emergency departments by expanding 911 patient care models that give paramedics more flexibility to treat certain 911 patients at home, on scene, or take them to appropriate care facilities in your community. Patients, I'll take it. There is no doubt that patients diverted from emergency rooms through these initiatives received the care they needed up to 17 times faster, with 94% with of them avoiding the emergency room in the days following treatment. The programs are working. Based on the proven success of this program, we have expanded patient care models, and I'm thrilled to share that nearly 200 patient care models led by over 50 paramedic services are now approved to implement 911 patient care models. These models, these models are application-based, and we will continue to work with any emergency medical services who want to implement these innovative programs and ideas keep them coming we want to see them our government has also made the largest investment in pediatric care in ontario's history to connect children and youth to care close to home and we're investing an additional 330 million dollars each year for more than 100 high priority pediatric care initiatives to expand pediatric services in every corner of the province this includes hiring more staff to increase the number of day surgeries, increasing access to diagnostic imaging, and reducing delays for children and youth to connect to mental health services. It was great to be in Ottawa for, with so many pediatric leaders for this announcement, including Alex Munter, CEO of the Children's Health of Eastern Ontario, who said, and I quote, today is a historic day for pediatric health care in Ontario, the single biggest expansion of our capacity ever. We're also making it easier for more people to access primary care in your community. Moving forward with expanding and creating new interprofessional primary care teams. We are currently reviewing proposals for new and expanded interprofessional primary care teams. This is the first expansion since their inception and we intend to announce successful applications starting this fall. We are also improving access to primary care by increasing the number of nurse practitioners operating across Ontario. And we continue to grow our healthcare workforce in many other ways, including breaking down barriers for internationally educated healthcare workers, allowing healthcare wor workers registered in other Canadian provinces and territories to immediately start working in Ontario and expanding the Learn and Stay grant that provides tuition and books costs to eligible students in nursing, 
paramedic programs, and medical lab tech programs. Adding over 300 paramedic program student spaces at provincial colleges this year. And we are moving forward with the largest medical school expansion in more than a decade. These investments will build on the over 63,000 new nurses and nearly 8,000 new physicians that have registered to work in Ontario since 2018. This coupled with the thousands of additional personal support workers now providing care across Ontario. Last year we set a record with over 15,000 new nurses registered to work and care for the people in Ontario in your communities. We will continue to grow Ontario's healthcare workforce and ensure that there is a pipeline of talented, skilled healthcare workers now and into the future. Home and community care services are also critical to providing patients with the right care in the right place. We are delivering early on our promise to expedite additional funding from our $1 billion investment to the home and community care sector. This will support frontline workers, improve the quality of home care services, and ensure no matter where you live in Ontario, you can rely on consistent and high quality care in your community or directly in your home. And as part of this plan, we are expanding palliative care services across Ontario, connecting more Ontarians with comfortable and dignified end-of-life care that is closer to our loved ones, because Ontarians should have a choice about how and where they spend their final days. Earlier this year, I joined Hospice and Palliative Care Ontario to announce our government has invested up to $147.4 million over three years to expand palliative care services across the province and improve supports for residential hospices. This funding will strengthen grief and bereavement support and advance care planning to help patients and families prepare for future health care decisions. We are developing Ontario health teams to the centres of integrated care delivery. In the coming years, across the province, they will take on the delivery of home and community care to seamlessly coordinate services for patients as soon as they begin their health care journey. And they are working to improve transitions between health care providers, ensuring a patient's medical record follows them wherever they go for care. Last month, I was in Sudbury to announce three new Ontario health teams in northeastern Ontario. And with only one remaining team application remaining, we are now very close to achieving full provincial coverage. In closing, our government continues to take decisive action to strengthen our health care system, to resume work that began prior to the pandemic, to build a public health sector that is both responsive and is evolving to meet the health needs and priorities of Ontarians and to work collaboratively with our health and community partners to implement creative and innovative approaches that provide more connected and convenient care for patients no matter where you live in Ontario. Thank you to all our municipal partners for your leadership and service to your community and for everything you do to support local health care. Stay well.